In this video, I go through my process to achieve a two-year-old Moringa tree in my backyard. This is where they're at right now, but let's start from the beginning. Here's when I first initially planted my Moringas, which I germinated inside my house and then ultimately transplanted them into the ground. They had a little bit of a difficult time uh, sticking into the ground, uh, staying in the ground without being knocked over and surviving, but you can see them here in my flower bed. I didn't really think about long terms how this would work out, but I just was ultimately trying to get them to grow. We're going to move pretty quickly through this first year as I have a complete video that covers my first full year of um, my trials of how I can how I achieved what you're seeing right there, which is a bushy style of moringa tree with lots of extra stems coming around from the base. And um, ultimately what it boils down to is cutting back your moringa tree pretty significantly early on. You can see this was my other test version that did not grow out as, grow out as bushy and only therefore has a few uh, main stems that are coming out from the bottom. Ultimately it grows taller faster um, and this now I'm jumping to the end of the year. So yeah so this you can see this one to the right um, only has maybe three or four main up branches that I, I cut back after the end of the first year. Um, now the timing of this uh, cutting for the end of the first year going into um, the second year. So the trees I planted in May, uh, during the winter I let them sort of just go dormant without a lot of growth and then I cut them back in the beginning of the growing season for me in Southern California which is starting around January uh, I cut them back and I believe this was the end of January um, 2016 to uh, begin for the growing season of this second year so now the trees are all cut back that's what I you could cut them back to. There's really no plan. It's ultimately, um, you know, what you want to do um, in terms of uh, how much you want, how much growth you want to have. You can see here's my dying orange tree. No longer, that actually no longer s survived. In the back there, there's a third. So there's well, there's actually four. There's a we'll see. Moringa tree to the left and then in the back there you can kind of see there's two branches for my third Moringa tree that has done very well. Um, so we're moving on. You can see this is that at the end of the growth season so I, that was after the full year of growth uh, allowing them to grow. I got um, I was able to achieve fruits and um, you know, I picked the trees pretty regularly to uh, provide me nutrients, provide the family uh, food to eat. And um, what I ended up doing was I ended up, as the trees got taller, I ended up just ultimately cutting back a full branch because rather than bringing out, bringing out a ladder and trying to get down the leaves, I would just cut down a full branch and then um, use that uh, all the leaves on that particular branch for the day, expecting that the tree was ultimately going to regrow anyway. So I would just take my time, slowly started cutting the trees back to about uh, maybe that's like six or seven feet tall, and I didn't. It wasn't my full cut back. And ultimately what it left me with at the end of the growing season heading into December was, you know, a fairly <laughs> ugly looking set of branches, There's a set of stems that grew um, upwards. 
So you can see they during f that that was essentially from October then now to January the trees just stayed dormant they survived the winter here we had lots of rain now you see in January they're starting to pop out their new growth this is the beginning of the growth season so um, you know I was ready to start letting these grow again ultimately I, I, my plan was to cut back uh, the trees right and in January and so that's what I'm gonna do here um, I cut back and I did a, something a little bit different this time on my my preferred bushy style tree I really cut it back the way I did ultimately like the first year about two uh, three feet tall knowing that it's going to grow pretty um, rapidly from there but it's going to give me a lot of accessible um, branches but I decided to leave the other two which didn't have as many branches in a taller starting point mainly because I have this big fence here right where they are and during the morning hours the sun peaks right over that fence and I knew it would provide these trees probably an extra three or four hours of sunlight per day and interestingly enough the very exact spots that I had extra sunlight to the trees grew like crazy and ultimately what I have learned about the moringa trees is they are very, very they they absolutely uh, feed off of a lot of sunlight the more sunlight you can provide them the more heat the more they're going to grow and so anything you can do to get these trees into the sun and into the warmth you can see over here where I have the taller trees left to the right and now I've um, cut back this uh, tree to the left which really has a ton of upshoots and I'm very happy with how much how many uh, areas it, it ultimately puts out new branches um, you can see how thick it is at the base but you know essentially what I'm saying is actually throughout this year this second year I found that um, the taller trees really had some vigorous growth although it was harder to reach because they're higher up so it means that I have to do a little bit of maneuvering to uh, get the substance it was it ended up being a very good mix for me you can see now now that they're starting to grow we're in May and we're caught up and ultimately the you can um, see in the back there this tree that uh, was not one of my um, powerhouses to begin with really has taken off and um, you know maybe it hit some sort of spot underground that's helped it to grow but um, I definitely believe that it's it's taking over a lot of the sunlight because it's in the prime spot where it's getting the majority of the sunlight and so it's um, just taking off you know taking off uh, with uh, very very rapid growth over the top of that fence there and I still, you know, I like having the mixture of both. So right next to it, here is my bushier styled tree. And you can see how just how much growth there is available to me. It's a whole lot of accessible branches right there I can um, pull off. And I'm going to get into it in a later video talking about the difference between new growth and older growth. But you'll have to stay tuned to that because that's going to be upcoming. There is a significant flavor difference uh, in the new growth versus the old growth. So we'll see you next time.